Hello everyone. Today we talk about one of the most complex structures at the skull base, the temporal bone. It has strong relationship with numerous structures, including the internal carotid artery, the middle meningeal artery, the internal jugular vein, the greater and lesser petrosal nerve, and more globally with the entire facial nerve component that passes through the internal acoustic canal to enter the petrous portion of the temporal bone and finally with the organs responsible for hearing and balance. The temporal bone is an even, symmetrical bone that forms the base of the skull and in small part, the vault. The temporal has relationships with five different bones. The occipital bone through the occipitomastoid suture and the petrooccipital suture. With the sphenoid at the level of the sphenosquamosal, that it is formed by the articulation between the posterior border of the greater wing and the anterior border of the squamous part of the temporal bone. The sphenopetrosal, which connects the greater wing with the petrous part of the temporal bone in the middle cranial fossa. With the parietal at the level of the squamous suture. From the tyrian, it extends posteriorly, curves inferiorly, and continues as the parietotemporal suture. Along its course, we find the pterian and the asterian. With the zygomatic bone at the zygomaticotemporal suture, or temporozygomatic suture. With the mandible at the temporomandibular joint between the mandibular fossa and articular tubercle of the temporal bone, and the condylar process of the mandible. The temporal bone consists of six parts. The squamous part, the zygomatic process, the mastoid and the petrous part, which together form the petromastoid part, the tympanic part, the styloid process. The temporal bone houses various important structures. A great deal of potential pathology can arise from temporal bone injury. Fortunately, it is one of the thickest bone in the body. The petrous face of the temporal bone, also known as the petrous pyramid, is in fact the densest bone in the body and lies within the temporal bone. This bone requires more than 1,800 pounds or 850 kilograms of force to fracture it. The squamous part has an outer face and an inner face. The outer face is convex and possesses a groove. Point of passage of the superficial temporal artery coming from the external carotid artery. This surface presents the origin of the temporalis muscle. The inner face is concave, presenting the point of union with the parietal, forming the squamous suture and impressions that follow the groove and contour of the temporal lobe of the cerebrum. There is also a groove on this surface for the middle meningeal artery that is one of the largest branches of the external carotid artery and the most important dural artery because it supplies more than two-thirds of the cranial dura. The middle meningeal artery arises from the internal maxillary artery. The mandibular fossa or glenoid fossa is the smooth concave articular surface formed by both the squamous and petrous parts of the temporal bone. It forms the superior articular part of the temporomandibular joint and lodges the condyle of mandible. Behind the glenoid cavity is the external auditory canal or external auditory meatus which ends at the tympanic membrane. The inner ear is located within the bony labyrinth of the temporal bone and contains the cochlea, the semicircular canals, the utricle, and saccule. These organs make up the membranous labyrinth that is within the bony labyrinth. From these special sensory organs of the inner ear, the vestibulocochlear nerve transmits afferent impulses to the central nervous system, encoding auditory stimuli, static and dynamic equilibrium. The zygomatic process articulate with the temporal process of the zygomatic bone to form the zygomatic arch. Below the origin of the zygomatic process is the tympanic part. It has three sutures. The tympanomastoid fissure is one of the intrinsic fissures of the temporal bone, located parallel and posterior to the bony external auditory canal, dividing the tympanic part and the mastoid process. It gives passage to the auricular branch of the vagus nerve, Arnold's nerve, from the middle ear to the preauricular soft tissues. The petrodympanic fissure, also known as the squamodympanic fissure or the glazerian fissure, is a suture in the temporal bone that runs from the temporomandibular joint to the tympanic cavity. The tympanosquamous fissure separates the tympanic part of the temporal bone from the squamous part. It is parallel and anterior to the bony external auditory canal and divides medially into the petrodympanic fissure and the petrosquamous fissure. The vaginal process is a projecting lamina of bone on the inferior surface of the petrous portion of the temporal bone that is continuous with the tympanic plate and surrounds the root of the styloid process.
The mastoid part of the temporal bone is its posterior component. The inferior conical projection of the mastoid part is called the mastoid process, which is palpable just posterior to the earlobe. The medial extracranial surface of the mastoid process contains a deep groove called the digastric fossa, or mastoid notch, which originates the posterior belly of digastric muscle. In addition, it contains air-filled spaces called the mastoid air cells. The mastoid process itself gives rise to the sternocleidomastoid muscle, which with a unilateral contraction rotates the head to the contralateral side. The splenius capitis muscle, which with a unilateral contraction extends, rotates, and laterally flexes the head. The longissimus capitis muscle, which laterally flexes and rotates the head and neck if one side alone contracts, as well as extends the head if both sides contract. The styloid process is a cylindrical projection of varying lengths averaging 2 to 3 centimeters. The styloid process projects from the inferior part of the petrous temporal bone and offers attachment to the stylohyoid ligament, the stylomandibular ligament, and the stylohyoid, stylopharyngeus, and styloglossus muscles. So the styloid process facilitates the movement of the tongue, pharynx, larynx, hyoid bone, and mandible. The styloglossus receives innervation from the hypoglossal nerve. Innervation of the stylohyoid is by facial nerve. The stylopharyngeus muscle is supplied by the glossopharyngeal nerve. The petrous part helps form the jugular foramen along with the occipital bone. The jugular fossa is a depression situated on the inferior surface of the petrous temporal bone, posterior to the inferior opening of the carotid canal. It lodges the jugular bulb. Interiorly lies the jugular foramen. The stylomastoid foramen is a small opening on the inferior surface of the petrous part of the temporal bone. It is situated between the base of the styloid process and the mastoid process. The facial nerve main motor portion passes through the stylomastoid foramen. The apex of the petrous face extends anteromedially, forming not only the jugular foramen but also the internal aperture of the carotid canal. It is delimited by the posterior margin of the greater wing of the sphenoid bone anteriorly and the basilar aspect of occipital bone posteromedially. The carotid canal is the point of entrance of the internal carotid artery, which is the major arterial supply to the brain and other deeper regions of the head. The carotid canal also transmits the sympathetic nerve plexus and the internal carotid venous plexus, a venous network around the internal carotid artery connecting with the cavernous sinus and the internal jugular vein. Anteriorly, we can see the point of origin of the levator veli palatini. The primary site of origin of the muscle is a quadrangular area upon the medial extremity of the inferior aspect of the petrous part of the temporal bone. Here, the muscle arises by a small tendon. The tensor veli palatini is placed lateral to the levator veli palatini. It arises from the scaphoid fossa at the base of the medial pterygoid plate and from the lateral wall of the cartilage of the auditory tube. It opens the opening of the auditory tube during swallowing, which allows equalization of pressure between the middle ear and pharynx. The endocranic face of the petrous part has relationships superiorly with the cerebrum and inferiorly with the cerebellum, but the most important part is the point that joins the two faces, the upper edge of the petrous part of the temporalis, which represents the attachment point of the lateral margin of the tentorium cerebelli. The temporal bone has a relationship with the trigeminal nerve via the Meckel's cave. The trigeminal cave, it is described as a space at the tip of the petrous portion of the temporal bone where houses the proximal trigeminal nerve and trigeminal or gasserian ganglion. The internal acoustic canal is the point of passage of facial nerve vestibulocochlear nerve, vestibular ganglion, and labyrinthine artery, the main arterial supply to the vestibular apparatus and cochlea. We can see the carotid canal, in this case the point of exit of internal carotid artery. Here we can see also the arcuate eminence where the semicircular canal lies. The hiatus for the greater petrosal nerve allows passage of the namesake nerve, the greater superficial petrosal nerve a branch of the facial nerve. The petrosphenoidal ligament, Gruber's ligament, extends from the petrous apex to the posterior clenoid process and forms the roof of Dorello's canal through which the abducens nerve passes. Summarizing, in a lateral view of the right temporal bone, we note the border that divides it from the parietal bone, the squamosal suture, 
from the occipital bone, the mastoid suture, from the sphenoid, the sphenosquamosal suture, from the zygomatic bone, the zygomatic suture, and the temporomandibular joint that connects the mandibular fossa with the condyle of the mandible. The outer face of the squamous part possesses a groove, point of passage of the superficial temporal artery coming from the external carotid artery. We can see the vaginal process that is continuous with the tympanic plate and surrounds the root of the styloid process, which offers attachment to ligaments and muscles that are involved in the movements of the tongue, pharynx, larynx, hyoid bone, and mandible, and the mastoid process that gives rise to the sternocleidomastoid muscle, the splenius capitis muscle, the longissimus capitis muscle, and the posterior belly of digastric muscle. Behind the glenoid cavity is the external auditory canal, which ends at the tympanic membrane. The inner face presents a groove for the middle meningeal artery that is one of the largest branches of the external carotid artery. We can see the internal acoustic canal that is the point of passage of facial nerve, the vestibulocochlear nerve, the vestibular ganglion, and the labyrinthine artery. From a view from below, we can still see the zygomatic process, the mandibular fossa, the mastoid process, and the styloid process. The jugular fossa that lodges the superior bulb of the internal jugular vein. The carotid canal located in the petrous temporal bone that transmits the internal carotid artery, the internal carotid venous plexus, and the sympathetic nerve plexus from the neck into the cranial cavity. The stylomastoid foramen, which is the termination of the facial canal and transmits the facial nerve and the stylomastoid artery. We have concluded for today. I'll leave you some review videos and other similar content here.